it's, it's now time to do our monthly catching up with the winners of the Arise Play in the View short film competition. And for the month of May, we will now go ahead to speak with the trio of Senate Ewa, who directed the short film Bloodline, Austin Lodlas, director of The Last of Us, and Yunusa Koride, who directed Flesh and Spirit. Good morning to you guys. Good morning, Yunusai. Yunusai is here with us um, <laughs> at the studio. Uh, all the, the other guys, thanks for joining us. Hope you can hear us loud and clear. Yeah. Yes, all I right. can hear Good you. Morning. Thanks for having Good me. Good morning. Okay, Good morning. thank you. Thank you, guys. And, and congrats. You know, you're the winners uh, this time around. Congratulations to you all. But we'll start with Yunusa uh, in the studio with us. Um, how, how, how does it feel, you know, being the... A winner this this time around and um your film is flesh and spirit right yes. um a girl in, being in love with a masquerade yeah and i read what you wrote about uh the fact that nobody should define how to love and who should be loved that sounded to me like what Harun Dati roy i don't know if you know that popular indian writer wrote in the god of small things basically saying that love cannot be pigeonholed it, 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 what is the inspiration for you uh, in uh, Flesh and Spirit, in making that film? Um, well, I, I wouldn't say like there's like a big inspiration behind the film, but um, I, just, I just felt um, it, it, uh, I was inspired by, by the kind of films I was seeing at that period. You know, I was seeing a whole lot of films that, you know, that were rooted in in African culture, I saw, I saw the likes of uh, the Lost Okorochi yeah. by Abati Makama and uh, Juju Stories by uh, Soro Sixteen. So these uh, films, you know, in in a way, they influenced my, uh, you know, my um, my ideas to making uh, Flesh and Spirit. And the whole idea is to just tell, you know, a story of love. It's it's just like bringing back uh, Beauty and the Beast and mm -hmm. You know, just adapting, you know, the, the, old, the old story of Beauty and the Beast and making it African. So it's, it's just saying that there's no boundary to love. Mm. You're free to love whoever you want to love or anything you, 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 you want you to love. You don't think that people might um, say that you are overly humanizing uh, the spiritual. Mm. And these days we see, we see ladies, you know, given... What do they call that thing? Twerking, you know, twerking <laughs> dance to masquerades. We say masquerades, you know, going mm. to support football team, Chelsea, you know, Arsenal. I, I mean, that, it, it looks like there's an attempt to say, go, go, be careful, mm. as they say, you know. <laughs> I, I mean, the mystique is fast disappearing. So when you now have a masquerade falling in love, we don't know the kind of a lady that this is. Mm. Are you not overly humanizing, you know, or what ought to be a spiritual matter? Um... <laughs> I would just say the whole idea of of the film is is to just break the boundaries between the physical and the spiritual. Okay. Because we we see this African, you know, spirituality as something bad, mm. and it's 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 not something bad. You know, it's it's just how how we've been programmed. Yeah. You know, to see this masquerade as being scary. Yeah. You know, they bring about death, terror, and stuff like that. Well. I'm just trying to break, you know, the boundaries between the, the physical and spiritual and say that, you know what, this, you know, there's, there's something fun about spirituality, okay. you know, and it's, uh, it's not just spirituality, but spirituality in Africa. Yeah. Okay, well, that's an interesting boundary to, to touch, and we're going to come back to it. But let's bring Austin in very quickly. So, Austin, you um, directed The Last of Us, which is a true life account of, let's say, street kids who fought societal odds. Let's just talk us through your premise on that as well, please. Okay, um, basically, uh, I, I was driven by the love for humanity, all right? And then I usually, my film works will always have um, that undertone of um, social behavioral change and communication. So uh, you see an ill in the society, which had to do with neglected, abuse, and abandoned children, uh, who we can find almost in every es ethnic extraction of the Nigerian society. And here in Calabar, we have a whole lot of them who often get wrongly accused, uh, 
get the jungle justice uh, justice of being lynched, uh, killed, and all that. So uh, that um, story of the different kids, uh, we, we, we got the story of someone who was actually a, a young boy uh, who was accused of stealing and he was burnt, uh, he was lynched and he was burnt. So uh, such stories keep coming on in, in, in Catalaba uh, of Cross River State. You, you hear people give them, give them them, street kids, they call them Scolombo. And, and, it's, mm. and when you hear that uh, they call them Scolombo, you, every evil that happens within and around the society is attributed to them. So we feel that um, these kids actually have background stories. And talking to some of them, we, I got to understand that uh, they, uh, their, their present condition, the condition they find themselves in, were not by their making. You have um, parents who actually throw them out, guardians who throw them out on the street, and um, they even go to the extent of um, taking them to church, accuse them of uh, demonic possession, uh, possession uh, witchcraft, and all that. And you see churches even beat some of them, trying to make uh, force them to confess that they are witches. So given that, I, I, I felt that um, this very piece of work, uh, the last of us, um, should actually uh, as well... Um, uh, talk about this very issue of child neglect, abandonment, and abuse. And of course, it is born out of that my uh, objective, which I always lace my film and theater works with, and that is to drive uh, social behavioral change and communication. And that helps me to as well uh, push the frontiers of um, the traditional uh, function areas of um, entertainment so that it shouldn't be all about inter uh, information, entertainment, education. So it could push to exhortation and also causing a progressive change in the society. All right. Thank you, Austin. But let us also bring Senate in now. Uh, Senate, can you hear me? You showed bloodline. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so you shot bloodline. Yep, yep. yep how yep, how yep. much of the uh, interplay between uh, you know the spirituality and you know the the secular the reality do you have in bloodline? Because I read the synopsis of it, uh, and it looked to me like all the three themes have something to do uh, with something beyond us, even in their preachment, even in their thrust. In Bloodline, um, what are you dealing with and what do you think impressed uh, the judges for you to have been selected as uh, one of the three winners for the month? Oh, okay. Um, thanks for having me. Um, I wouldn't want to tell a film like Bloodline without first of all going back to my African origin, my Nigerian origin, and then of course the heritage that we have. I'm a storyteller, so um, basically the shooting bloodline for me is like telling our own original narratives. And you cannot separate our spirituality, our being, our existence from who we are. We are Africans and we'll keep and telling African stories. So for bloodline for me, it talks about loyalty, it talks about heritage, of course, it talks about the fact that um, we have to go the extra mile and extra length to try and get back, to take back, to protect, to defend, whatever it takes for us to protect that which belongs to us, both our language and everything that relates to Africa as an entirety, Africa as a whole. But then for Broadline, I'm, I was trying to see how we too can celebrate heroes, you know. I was trying to see how we too can tell our own stories that want to, uh, uh, you would always watch the, the Mavic guys try to give you the superhero thing. So we too have superheroes that are, are connected to our ancestors that are strong, that um, you can't come with scientific verifications to start questioning their potency because for us it is imbued, it is natural, it is spiritual. So bloodline 
is that journey that takes um, a young girl through living her destiny, which um, the fact that um, whatever happens and you find yourself in a community where you have to protect, you have to protect, you have to carry out that cause, even if willingly you don't want to. But then there is something called destiny. And if you follow the Greek mythology, you would understand the part of destiny. You just end up finding yourself doing that thing which you were born to do. So bloodline has that to do with our heritage, has to do with um, um, the fact that we live to conquer and we live to protect and we live to defend. So everything about heritage, that blood, that's bloodline. All right, very nice to hear. You know, it's very interesting that all three of you have got very almost similar styles, like um, Steve mentioned. Your storylines are almost quite esoteric, if we have to put it that way. Could you speak to some of the challenges that you could possibly have faced as directors in sticking to the concept of originality versus acceptability from your audiences? And anyone can take it first. Okay, so, Maybe um, we start with Eunice, who is in the studio with us. Um... Okay, um, I think I think there's there's this uh, there's what they say they say one for me one for one for you boy. Uh, in in my own case, I just I just feel it's um, it's it's just the way I feel because my my process it's 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 just the way I feel you know it's I'm not really concerned about reception. Or maybe making exact yeah ac uh, acceptability. I'm not really concerned about that. I just want to tell my my kind of stories and tell it the way I want to tell it. Um, at first I was I was uh, a little bit skeptical about the story. I told a friend of mine and she was like, you know, let's do this thing. You know, you know, let's let's just do it. And as as we were filming, um, a friend of mine that was in the costume the masquerade costume at some point it was it was scared it was like this this area we are shooting uh, they should not come and just you know just come and see where did, you know where did you shoot in, in lagos? um iwaya iwaya lagos okay yeah you know it's mm. it's it's like a sacred um environment so it was scared that people some some masquerade worshippers can just come and you know perform some kind of rituals and some guys came and they were trying to scare us and but we had to, you know, Lagos while well, we had to say to them and stuff. So it's it's just, you know, filmmaking for me, it's it's personal. And I feel I feel there are people that will connect to my story, but if people don't connect, you know, with, with the story, it's fine. You know, I'm not really all about uh, acceptability. So your audience will find you. Those that it resonates exactly. with will find exactly. the message. Exactly. All right, let's hear from um, Austin as well. Let's get Austin's opinion on this. Austin. Okay, I, I believe um, uh, creativity is boundless. Okay, it's limitless. You can always break uh, to achieve that which you want. And of course, um, many creatives just like me uh, uh, obey that rule according to how that uh, flashes through your mind. So while I was making that, I, I, I said, um, I don't want to go through the traditional form of uh, drama presentation. I just wanted to tell a story. Let me have that story run. But then in as much as I, I decided to actually uh, use that uh, method or uh, style or concept, if you like, um, uh, to uh, express that um, uh, creativity. I was conscious of uh, one fact that in as much as you wish, I wish to think out of the box, uh, I should also fall in within another box. While thinking out of the box, I fall into a different box and that different box mm -hmm. must be mm -hmm. the box of the audience, a possible target audience who must relate uh, uh, with and to the story. So that is just it. I allow the creative um, energy to flow and as, 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 as good as possible, I try to inject um, a trademark that will always make it look, okay, uh, this is not um, the traditional thing that we usually have. That's just it. Senate, let's get your take on this, please, as well. Okay, um, yeah, okay, for me, 
telling for me tell it, uh, storytelling um goes beyond all limits and knows no bounds and so if i want to tell a story i just want to tell a story from the point of view where you have to just sit back and say wow how come he's seen things from this other side because um we cannot we can all have the same script right but in telling the story, we would all have the creative energy and style and ideology on how to interpret it. So for me, basically, telling story is more like, come and sit down, I have something to say. And after, after listening, you would have to tell me, oh, wow, so you could see life from this point of view. So as a storyteller, definitely your first conception and idea would either hit people off or keep them on the balance, or just keep them where they are comfortable. Now, for me, I'm an avant-garde, and uh, I do avant-gardeism, so I try as much as possible not to tell you that story which you think you know. Even if it is a story that is as popular as anything, I'll tell it from a point of view out of the normal. So for me, being out of the normal is just a style, and it's just a brand I don't know. But then, um, that's who I am, and that's how I keep telling stories. So for Bloodline, it's a future film, actually. So what we have there is just the experimentation of it to see how people are going to accept that aspect of it. So just trying to consider what it looks like when people say that. I believe when the judges decided to look at the film and then say, oh, this film is worth sharing. That's the thing. This film is worth sharing. The story is worth um, seeing. They saw something that's out of the normal. I, I won't start pointing out what those out of the normal are. Probably you all have to just sit down and say, okay, let me just watch what this guy is trying to say with the story. Yeah, that's for that. But for the challenge is always, you know, when you're trying to tell something new, something um, out of the normal, you would have even your own actors doubting how your end result is going to look like. When I make films, I just make my actors feel, just come, do your performance, give me your best. Allow me to sit down and do the cutting. And I'll bring this story exactly as you've read it on the script. So that's me from beginning to end. I just know what is going to come out like. So for 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 storytelling process, I I carry that particular niche for all my short films. Then for the challenges, of course, um, shooting in in where it looks like a forest, and you just have. It's a three-man crew actually. So you have to see the BTS. When you see the BTS, you. Oh, so this is happening. Just a three-man crew, the lead actor, and then um, the other back set crew, just two of us. And so it's between us. It's a conscious conspiracy. So we all have to be on the same page at all times. So shooting where you would have to tell your actor, please don't worry, calm down, nothing will happen. There are no snakes here because we shot in the forest and we shot where there are termites, there are all of that. But for the actors to be comfortable to try and play, and running barefoot, and you are just seeing things that you know how the environment is, but then you would have to just be in character and stay in character. So that's one challenge entirely. And then we shot at um, Zuma Rock. <laughs> Going to shoot at Zuma Rock at the time where we went is you would want to say, okay, general insecurity, some actors are skeptical, like ah, Zuma Rock, ah, that place is um, almost lonely. So how do we do? Don't worry, we're a family. Whatever happens to you happens to me. So if, if it's not happening to you, it's not happening to me, we'll go and come back safely. We're telling the story. That's what we are, storytellers. So um, aside that, you know, the normal challenges of trying to get your work done, um, trying to work out of your your pocket, trying to do everything without any external sponsors, trying to just get your film made and just get that voice. And, and the fact that um, persons who have watched have really gave strong encouragement and appreciations and and now there are calls saying, when are you guys doing the future film? When are you guys bringing this into the future aspect of it, the lengthy aspect of it? So that has kept us motivated. So for me, um, when the challenges come, I just look for a way to find um, alternatives to it. There will always be that in the filmmaking All right. process. All right, guys. Uh, we just want to congratulate you one more time. Senate, Austin, and Yunusa. And we wish you the very best in your next endeavor.